This chapter is all about efficiency. Now, at this point, some people, and I might put myself in this category, oh, it's time to go on to the next chapter. I want to get to the good stuff. I want to get to the Photoshopping, and I do too. Don't get me wrong. But this stuff is important. When I went to cooking school, culinary school, first two weeks, about the only thing we made was something called a raft. You know, friends call me up. Hey, what have you been cooking? I say, we haven't done anything yet. They say, you've been there for two weeks. What are you doing? We're learning knife skills. We're learning kitchen organizational skills. We're learning all these things. These are our knife skills, our organizational skills. We're learning the program. And besides that, this particular chapter is about efficiency, how to get you going faster and even the program going faster. And there's nothing wrong with that. But once you have this information and once you have control of the program, you gain a certain sense of confidence and that confidence translates into creativity. So it really is a good thing to know. Now, in this lesson, we're going to talk about some of the preferences that we can use to gain efficiency. And actually, this is one of the few areas in Photoshop where it's different, at least on how you get to them, on a Mac or Windows system. If you're using Windows, go up to the word Edit and go down to Preferences. If you're using a Mac like I am, go to the word Photoshop and go to Preferences. Now, you can also use the shortcut Control, that's Control in Windows, Command on a Mac, Control or Command K to take you to the general preferences. And let's go ahead and check these things out. We could easily spend two hours here going over every one of these. It's not necessary for this chapter, although we will revisit preferences in other chapters when the things that are in them are relevant to what we're doing. One thing in general I want to mention, and that's export clipboard right here. What is that? Well, if you use it or if you leave it on, that's the default. Basically, when you close Photoshop down, any copied material in your clipboard that you've been copying and pasting in Photoshop, and we do copy, paste, and Photoshop, stays in the clipboard. To what end? Well, maybe you're going to open up another application like Illustrator, maybe, I don't know, InDesign, Microsoft Word, and you're going to paste it in there. Now, I don't recommend that. Let me explain why. When you take image and color information and do a copy and a paste, you're kind of filtering it through the operating system's clipboard, and it does change things like colors. Now, maybe not a lot, but it does. If I'm planning on moving some physical image in Photoshop into another program, rather than copying and pasting, I would save it as a PSD or a JPEG or something and open that actual document. So I turn this one off. And the reason I do is because when it's off, it purges the clipboard when Photoshop's done and you're not clogging up and slowing down your computer with information you really don't want to use anyway. That's general. Let's go into interface for one quick one here. Notice I have this turned off. Now that's turned on by default. They're tool tips. The tips come up, you've seen it. When you hover over a tool or something, it tells you a little bit about it. The reason I don't like those for teaching is because sometimes they get in the way and I don't want them getting in the way of what we're trying to talk about. The other thing is, is once you become familiar with the program in a sense, they kind of get in the way anyway for you. Okay, so you want to watch that. I'll mention one other thing really quick. This is more aesthetics than efficiency, but they have really done some cool changes at Adobe on how we view things. For example, you've got these buttons up here to change the background. I like it darker because it takes the emphasis off of the interface and onto what you're trying to do. Down here, you can even now change things like the text that's inside of the panels and the menus by changing it right in here. That's pretty cool you will have to restart to see those changes activated. Now let's go into performance. This is kind of where I want to be anyway. Memory usage is RAM memory. All computers have some RAM on them. Some have more than others. Photoshop is a very RAM intensive program. Let me move this a little bit over here for a second. See these numbers down here where it says 69 megabytes, 69 megabytes. That is the operational size of the image, the one on the right, that number. What I need to know is do I have that much RAM memory times about 5 to 8? And I do. I have more than enough RAM memory to make this thing work. But you have a slider down here. So in order for the program to get efficient, it needs, according to most studies, not all of them, but most of them say 5 to 8 times that number. So if you routinely work on images that are 69.9 megabytes, 
then this number in here needs to be that number times 5 to 8. If it isn't, you could try moving this right here, left or right, to either add or subtract memory. I would not recommend slamming that all the way to 100%. Photoshop doesn't play well with others. Let's put it that way. What it does is it doesn't share. And if you crank that to 100%, you might start getting more efficient, which is cool. But in the end, what's going to happen is something else is going to need RAM, like your operating system or another open program, and Photoshop won't share the information, and it's either going to slow you down or even lock you up. So it's not something I'd recommend you do. The other one I want to mention is this one down here called Scratch Disks. In Scratch Disks, basically, these are other hard drives that I have attached to my computer. If I use them, if I turn them on, what does that mean? Well, Photoshop also uses Scratch Disk, which is hard drive space, and it writes stuff back to the hard drive based on what it's doing. Like, well, it's doing a filter. You see that little bar come up, a progress bar, and it's going really slow? It's because it's doing things with RAM, and it's doing things with Scratch Disks. But you're only using, by default, your main drive. And that thing's got a lot of stuff going on. You've got your operating system. You've got your programs. Everything is being read-write, read-write, read-write off that one drive. If you install others, you may already have some anyway, but if you install other hard drives and they're fast hard drives and you click these buttons, basically what you're saying is divide the load. Now studies have shown that if you use additional scratch disks and you can use as many as you've got and they're fast, they can increase the overall performance of Photoshop by sometimes up to 20%. That's not too bad. Now the other one over here is history states. Histories is undoes. I love undoes. It's my favorite thing on the entire planet. If life had an undo button, this would be a great world to live in. History states can go all the way up to a thousand. You say, whoa, man, if I put that at a thousand, I'll never have a problem. I'll always be able to undo something that I did earlier. I mean, a thousand, that's great. Okay, I agree. That is great. However, understand, if you do that and crank it to a thousand, what's going to happen is so much processing memory, time, RAM, all this stuff is going to come together just to hold those undo states for you that you're going to wind up really slowing yourself down. So I would suggest put a number in there that works for you. 20 is the default, but don't go overboard with it because it can eventually impact performance if you make the number too high. It's way better than it ever used to be, but it still is something that will slow you down. Now, as you can see, we have a whole lot more in terms of preferences, all kinds of things going on. We will talk about some of these a little bit later as we get into other areas where they're going to make sense for us. But in order for your changes to become permanent, don't forget you have to click OK up here. Well, there you go. Some of the efficiency preferences that can actually make the program increase in terms of its performance by up to 20%. If that could happen across the board, which it doesn't, but if it did, that would actually be one day out of every five, 20%. It's not too bad.